Hello everyone, welcome to my young and the restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. 2024 has been somewhat wild in Jinnah City up until this point, particularly this previous week. Jack didn't have the foggiest idea how right he was the point at which he as of late shouted that another time had arrived. For instance, I didn't expect one of our most memorable shocks of the new year to be Phyllis making an appearance to the Geno City Athletic Club in only a raincoat covering her underwear-clad body. I guess I ought not be astonished, however I was. Credit to Michelle Stafford for conveying those scenes the manner in which she did. I hate Phyllis pursuing Danny as a rule, yet I can't project that this previous week was engaging as she flung herself at him. It's a lot of a train wreck, thus... Obviously, I can't turn away from it. And keeping in mind that I'm looking, I'm seeing that Danny isn't precisely doing the most he can to be relentless in putting Phyllis advances down. I get why the person is struggling with opposing what is being tossed right in front of him, yet if he truly needed to stop it, he might have quite recently left and let Phyllis be. All things being equal, he procured a tough situation that he ended up sitting in when Christine saw him kissing Phyllis in the jazz relax. Christine really can't get a break nowadays. Like Nina, I typically say that Christine ought to offer Danny a reprieve, considering that Phyllis is so inclined to plan and position things to look a specific way. However, no, not this time. Phyllis positively set everything up, except Danny's own decisions, or deficiency in that department, landed him in a difficult situation with Christine. She saw Danny and Phyllis kissing, and it was not only some peck on the lips. It was a long kiss that left no question he was kissing her back. It is reasonable and supported that Christine is disturbed, so I'm happy she held her ground with him and didn't give him a pass. Do I suppose this is the end for Danny and Christine? No. It appears to be clear they are the couple to pull for, and that Phyllis is only the persistent issue for them as they stroll down the way toward their cheerful closure. Obviously, Phyllis is glad to be that thistle. Truth be told, I'm not persuaded that she truly is all that keen on Danny sincerely, regardless of whether she has persuaded herself that she is. I think she is more keen on having the opportunity to be the headache for Christine and keep her from getting Danny eventually. Them three have a ton of history, and Phyllis probably felt justified that Christine and Danny didn't wind up together after she split them up many years prior. In this way, she would rather not lose presently such an extremely long time later. That longing to win could be driving all of them separated. Phyllis hates to lose, all things considered. When this stupidity with Danny and Christine is finished, I trust Phyllis gets somewhat even more an experienced storyline once more. Somebody from before ought to return, lastly give her the romantic tale she merits, similar to Jack at last got with Diane. I realize that many individuals have opposed Diane's return and romantic tale with Jack, yet I'm not one of those individuals. I'm excited Susan Walters is back on the show, and I genuinely want to believe that they don't think of her personality into a corner again this time around. It's fascinating to discover that Jack will be naming Diane the co-president of Jebot. Does each organization require a co-president in Geno City for reasons unknown? For what reason can't Jack simply be the chief without the co? Notwithstanding, I viewed it hilarious that Diane appears as getting precisely exact thing Ashley was apprehensive she would wind up with when she and Jack initially began reaching out. A significant situation at the family organization. Yet, regardless of whether Ashley likes it, Diane is family now. Also, I really like the dynamic of the Abbott family with Diane and Jack in charge. I'm likewise anticipating perceiving how the dynamic might change as Diane gets gotten comfortable at Jebot in her new position. Kyle's response to Jack naming Diane as co-chief was unquestionably a piece surprising. He had a similar thought of giving her the position and planned to recommend that to Jack, However, he surely appeared to be somewhat harmed when he understood that Jack had a similar thought and wasn't intending to give him the position. Kyle is getting along for the time being, however, I figure he might wind up detesting his folks and blowing up once more. It is, for sure, as Jack pronounced for this present week, the beginning of another period for Jebot. 
Yet, will this new time unite the abbots as a family or divide them? The Newman family produces into another time of their own this year, one that incorporates Claire and Cole. Victor shared his anxiety in regards to Victoria's prosperity with Cole, communicating a similar vulnerability about whether this new period will unite them all or have critical ramifications for one or every one of them. Victor has no faith in Claire yet, yet I trust his doubts about her are not precise. It was contacting seeing Claire and Victoria at last begin to bond this week as they visited in the medical clinic. I'm excited we are seeing them develop nearer. How extraordinary could it be for Claire and Victoria to wind up back at Newman Ventures together before the year's end? I couldn't say whether Claire would essentially need to get back to her work after all that occurred there. However, on the off chance that she does, Audra ought to continue to flatter to Nikki now so Claire doesn't be able to dominate her. Now that Audra is kicking exhaust to the check and doing whatever she might want to do, she might have to depend on her give at Newman for years to come. Coincidentally, I love the excursion that the authors continue to take us on with Audra. This week didn't frustrate as one more layer of her personality was stripped back for us. I cherish her discussion with Nikki about the battle her dad had with dependence and how she relates to Nikki's own battles on account of what she proceeded with him. Getting some more understanding into Audra, by seeing this little window into her past was perfect. Furthermore, we didn't cherish seeing her rise up to exhaust and disavow him this week. The truth will come out eventually on the off chance that she's truly cut off them this time or not, yet hissed at trusting it's a new period for Audra. It likewise is by all accounts the unfolding of another period for Sharon. She sent off her redid organization, Cassidy First Innovation, toward the beginning of the week, and quite a bit of Geno City's tip-top was in participation. Scratch was particularly moved by the new name of the organization and how it regarded the late little girl, Cassie. While I value the nostalgic worth behind the name, I don't think it is the best name they might have concocted. In any case, I'll deal with it. I'm unquestionably hoping everything works out for Sharon in her new pursuit. Sharon has had to deal with a ton, and it is ideal to see the show apparently giving her the spotlight this year as her personality makes a new beginning both by and by and expertly. I absolutely feel that she's settled on the best choice by severing things with possibility. Also, she is by all accounts revived in life as she takes on her new job as chief of her own organization. I genuinely want her collaborating with Chancellor Winters, and I really want to believe that we get to see her associating with a greater amount of Geno City's business world class this year. I partook in her connections with Sally, Billy, and Devon, and it would be enjoyable to see this multitude of various characters cooperate on a more customary premise as they team up on various tasks. Billy and Devon don't appear to be not entirely oak to really awful of a beginning in charge of Chancellor Winters together, and I figure they could be a decent equilibrium for each other. They are not really on rival sides, yet with respect to the crack between their colleagues, Jill and Mamie, they are positively in conflict somewhat. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.